you are watching this recorded broadcast by Resurrection and the Life Tanzania by Joseph Kwajima, Senior Pastor and Bishop of Glory of Christ Tanzania Church. GCTC is the largest mega church in East Africa with a congregation of over 70,000 strong. Join us today and experience the resurrection power of Christ as he raises the dead, heals the sick, and liberates every captive. Saidi, Saidi, Famu, Hallelujah, Nijuepe, Lola, Kena, Woko, Keka. I request for us to take our seats. Congratulations for continuing on with our prayers. I would like to give you certain words that I will try to speak them with utmost calm, but they are fundamental words. When you read in the Holy Bible, in the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 10, from verse 7, it is written, but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God will be finished, as he declared to his servants, the prophets. The word that my heart is touched by is that the secret of God would be finished as he had declared to his servants, the prophets. Another thing which touches me here, when the angel sounded the trumpet, he said, he said, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared to his servants, the prophets. So there's a certain mystery of God, which God had declared to the prophets. But also, Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Let me read. The, then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Let me repeat again. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. This trumpet was sounded, and then it was declared that the kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Listen for a few minutes. I want to speak about the kingdom. Tell your neighbor, kingdom. Repeat again, kingdom. I want to hear your voices say kingdom. Now, many people, when they say the kingdom of heaven, we think that, uh, we think of going to heaven. When you ask the person, will you enter into the heaven, kingdom of heaven? They think about first dying and then going to heaven. We have been taught this in the future tense, the coming time, in regards to the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of heaven is not that it is ascertained, attained in heaven. It's attained right here. That is why Jesus told his disciples, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. So when we say the, his kingdom we say that it should come here on earth, to Tanzania, to the world. The question that we are to ask ourselves is that from the time that Jesus taught his disciples that they should be praying to God the Father to bring the kingdom, did he not bring the kingdom? Because these words which we are speaking are from the first century, 2,000 years ago. From the time Jesus told his disciples that you should pray for the kingdom to come, has that kingdom already come? One thing that I want to tell you is that 
God created man in his likeness and in his image. This word, he made man in his image and in his likeness. It says, he made, it means that he made us in his glory. He made man according to his appearance. He made man as he was. And then the word, that he should have dominion. He should have dominion. He should have dominion. It means that he should build the kingdom. He should commence, introduce the kingdom. So when God brought you here on earth, his initial purpose in bringing Adam and Eve was that they should start the kingdom. So that's why they were those who did dominate. They were told to have dominion over the fish of the sea, to have dominion over the fowl of the air. God was thinking that he wanted to uh, introduce, to begin his kingdom here on earth. When Satan came and when they sinned, they... Satan took the kingdom. That is why he was called the king or the prince of darkness. He took the kingdom. He plundered it from them. So when Jesus came, he came to plunder, to take back the kingdom which we were uh, deprived of for his purpose. That's why Jesus, he says, I did not come according to the Torah, but I've come for the kingdom. The kingdom of God has come here on earth. When you receive Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. When you pray such, you have entered into the kingdom of God, even though you're still here on earth. Say amen. It is not that you die and then you go to heaven. No, when you pray, Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. Those words... By those words, you enter into the kingdom. You begin to then be called a child of the kingdom while you are here on earth. Many times people think that the kingdom of heaven, that it's only attained once you die. And that's why many people are troubled. Over the past two, three days, I've spent a lot of time with the Lord, many hours speaking with Him, so that I will tell you something that in the next few days it will change your life, your outlook, your destiny. It's not, these are not preachings, but it's something that will change. Listen to me intently. When you say the kingdom of heaven, I have shown you that the, that the scriptures say that kingdom come. From the time when Adam came, what God wanted to do was to build his kingdom here on earth. A kingdom in that the dominion of God, which has influence of God which has the cultures of God, which has the laws of God, which has the constitution of God, which is the Bible, which has the law of God, which is also called the Bible, which has the mind of God and the purpose of God even here on earth. Now when Satan took this from them, Satan came from heaven as an angel. He was not a king. When he plundered Adam and Eve, they, he then said, I am a king. That's why we see the scripture that says, I saw a star descending from heaven, and he, out of the pit of Hades came out a king. And the one they call king is an angel of Hades, but he had plundered them of the kingdom. So now, when you receive Jesus now, when Jesus came, he came and he said, I, I, and he followed Satan. He followed him all the way to Hades, and he crushed his head, and he took back the kingdom. Now, by our believing in him, when we get saved, when you pray that prayer, and that you say, Father God, I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Welcome into my heart. When you say those words, you then, it is then that you enter into the kingdom of Jesus, even though you are here on earth. It is then that you become a child of the kingdom. And that's the meaning of the scriptures which say that the sons of this world are more shrewd then the generate in their generation than the sons of light. So therefore, you're supposed to know that you where you are, you're a child of the kingdom. And you're within the kingdom of God here on earth. Say amen. So therefore, when we pray thy kingdom come, when you are a king, when you are in the kingdom, it is that you are in the kingdom of Jesus. That is why Jesus said certain words, which I'm going to read to you. In the book of, of Luke, chapter 16, verse 16 to verse 17. Let me read verse 16 first. Luke 16, 16. I'm speaking to somebody's heart. 
when you receive a certain truth, haven't you ever asked yourself, why is it that people who are born again, you've been saved for many years, but your life does not change. You pray, but your life does not change. You find a person who's born again, they just go from one church to another, from Ifata Church to Full Gospel Bible Fellowship Church. They go to Assemblies of God Church, but their life is stagnant. But when they think now, I've heard that resurrection and the life, there's a certain thing, let me go there. But let me tell you something. When you hold into the concepts which I'm trying to tell you, you must know that in the world there are concepts. There's the chief principle. When you have a good concept, you'll make good decisions. If you have a falsified concept, you will make bad decisions. In English we say, you have an idea. You have an idea about something. And that idea, later on, it, it becomes an ideology. And the ideology that a person has causes them to either prosper or to fail. Let me read Luke 16, 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Repeat the words, the law and the prophets were until John. These words, Jesus is speaking them. I want everybody to wake up. If you're a resident pastor, my, please wake up. My associate pastors, wake up. My minister pastors, wake up. My potential shepherds, my shepherds, my shepherds on training, please wake up. And all those who have come here today, please wake up. Jesus said, the law and the prophets were until John. It means that now they are not existent. He said, listen to me, the affairs and the matters of the law, this means from the time of Moses, Moses all the way from Moses the, until the five books were written. Moses, he led the Israelites in the wilderness. When they got to the wilderness there, they went into the promised land. That was during the time of the law. They arrived there. When they arrived at the land of, the, of um, promise, they asked for a king. And the first king was Saul. And then that is when the prophets began. From that time, from Joshua, from the time of Joshua, from Joshua, Ruth, the prophets, the prophets, up until Malachi. Then Jesus came through then. And then he said, please listen to me. From that time, way back, from Moses and all of the affairs up until the prophets, all of that, it closes at the time of John the Baptist. That is why John began to preach and say, John is a very important prophet because John closed a certain era. He closed the era from the prophets and the law and he opened up the new era of Jesus. That is why when he was born, from his time he, he declared, prepare ye the way, he is coming. John, he said, Jesus said the law and the prophets was the time from Moses up until John, but it has ended there. All the things pertaining to the prophets and to the law, they ended at John the Baptist. This is what Jesus said. Then Jesus said, from that time, the kingdom of God has been preached. And everyone is pressing into it. Or they enter into it by force. Clap unto the Lord. Now, I whom you see, I'm not the same me that you knew one week ago. I'm different. Listen, let me tell you one thing. I have discovered that we can be delayed because there are certain things that we have not shot at directly. For example, Jesus said to his disciples, for example, I will give you keys to the kingdom of God. I'll give you keys to the kingdom of God. And whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth will also be loosened in heaven. These keys which Jesus said that he's given unto us, which are they? Is it the Bible? But he did not say, I've given you a key. He says the keys of. They are plural. It's a bunch of keys. There are a bunch of keys, like about 300 of them. He says, I've given you keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is loosened. By these keys, I've given you keys of, the keys to. 
So when you pray and say, Lord Jesus, I receive you to be Lord and Savior of my life. It is then that you enter into the kingdom of God here on earth. But you are just in the lounge room at the entrance of the kingdom of God. So now there are certain keys which you have been bestowed, various keys, keys to go into your financial breakthrough, to your marital breakthrough, to go into your academics, into prosperity, keys to go into uh, your ruling, there are keys. So why is it when a person gets saved, why is it that when a person gets saved, they live many years and they keep saying there's something which God will do for me, God is faithful, he will perform. The first year, they're still saying the same thing. The second year later, third year, they're still saying God will do something for me until they become elderly and aged. And they say that these things will not take place during our lifetime. Why is it that they're like that? It is because they entered into the kingdom with keys and they remained in the lounge room of the kingdom of God and they died therein. The kingdom of heaven has come here. That is why Jesus, he said to his disciples, do not say that the kingdom of God is here or there, but it is here in your midst. It means that there's a kingdom here on earth, there's the kingdom of Jesus. And it is then when you receive Jesus into your heart, praying the prayer, Lord Jesus, I receive into my heart to be Lord and Savior of my life. When you, when you pray, Amen. It is then that you've entered into the kingdom of God here on earth. When you enter as such, there are certain things in the kingdom. It is a nation here on earth. It's the nation of heaven, the country of heaven that you enter into while you are here on earth. It has its laws. It has its culture. It has its language. It has its constitution. And it has its forces, which you have entered into. The Misfortune is that once you've entered into this kingdom of God, but the laws therein, you use a contrary law, and you're captured by the police therein, and you're taken into court. Clap unto the Lord first. Tell your neighbor the kingdom of heaven. He says, let me read you the scripture so that we can all move together in sync. I will return to that scripture, and then later, and then later, there is something that maybe not all people will receive it, but there's someone, one or two people whom you're supposed to receive this. Matthew 16, 19. It is written, And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth by those keys will be loosened also in heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. It means that. It means that he's saying, I will give you, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So now the scripture has been translated as such that when you die, when you go all the way to heaven, there you'll be given keys to use there. But no. The kingdom of heaven has already relocated to here. It has come here. Thy kingdom come. So when you get saved and you pray, Lord Jesus, I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. It is then that you've entered into the kingdom of who? Of what? The kingdom of heaven while here on earth. That is why you are called a child of the kingdom. You enter having a bunch of keys, so many of them, so many, so many keys. It is then that you've entered into the kingdom. In the kingdom, there's a constitution of the kingdom, which is, of course, the Bible. So now you're supposed to live according to the constitution of the kingdom. In the kingdom, there are kingdom laws. The laws of the kingdom, they don't do this, they don't do that, they don't do that, they don't do that. You're supposed to hold fast unto that law of the kingdom. The problem is that a person says that they are saved, but when you're saved, fundamentally what happened principally is that you enter into this kingdom, but you do not live according to the law of that kingdom. And that is why you cannot prosper, because in that kingdom which you've entered into, there are its laws. But you have been relocated, you've entered into this land, a spiritual land, nation, here on earth, which has its laws. If you're in the country of Tanzania, and you're driving on the right-hand side of the road, when you enter into Rwanda, you're supposed to drive on the opposite side of the road according to the law. When you're in Rwanda, 
These rumbo plastic bags which we have, when you throw them out in the streets, that pollution, you can be jailed for up to two, three months. So now, you as a person, when you get saved, you have entered into the kingdom of God here on earth. You enter pop into the kingdom, into the kingdom of God, and you find in that kingdom a king. The king therein, he has his laws. His law is the Bible. The Bible is the constitution. And there are rights of the citizens. So therefore, when you are in that kingdom, there are certain citizen rights which you're not supposed to request or ask. As long as you are a citizen, those rights, you are entitled to them. They are rights of the kingdom. Do not pray, I ask, I ask, I request. No, you're supposed to know what your rights are. What are these rights? You're supposed to ask yourself. But sometimes you find yourself indeed praying for things which are in fact your rights. But when you enter into the kingdom, there are rights of the kingdom. There are the ways of going about the kingdom. So now you're supposed to hold on to the law. You find a person and they say that I was saved in 1980 in the month of March, on the 4th of March. But when you look at their life, their life is as a life that does not have impact. It appears, though, that being saved, being born again, is about receiving Jesus and just and putting up with suffering, enduring, until the day you die when you enter into the kingdom of God. That's why you find a person when they pray, they say, Father God, I ask you to help us, that we should be able to enter into the kingdom of God. But no, you have already entered into the kingdom of God. You are there already. The issue is that you do not know you've entered into the kingdom. You don't know the law. You don't know the constitution of the kingdom. You have the keys of the kingdom. There are rooms for you to open to lose things for your life. Your marriage, your relationships, business, your work, your career to open, loosen up the nation. The keys are the secrets which God told his servants, the prophets, that he will loosen. But now, when I enter into that realm... I'm going to give people the keys that you've entered the kingdom. May you not die in the lounge room of the kingdom. You know. Clap into the Lord first. Clap into the Lord first. Woo! Now. Keys. Keys. Of the kingdom. Of course it's the whole entire Bible. Is the whole entire Bible, the, that is the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And there are many keys. Why do people die without having a prosperous life? There's nothing as confusing as having keys but not knowing which lock they are for. Clap into the Lord Jesus first. There's nothing as bad just ask yourself, for instance, in your life, you've been left a house. I'm saying, I have philosophy, that you have been left some keys without knowing which lock they are for. It is basically the same as not having any keys. So now, we enter into the kingdom and we have a bunch of keys, sets of keys that we have been given, but we don't know that where this particular key opens which lock so you try here you you try and try and try keep making various attempts until you reach the age of 80 but there are many keys which you have yet to use and then you hear that somebody's been called by the lord you keep experimenting with these keys but they're not the one for the lock if you give your keys to someone right now and tell them go to my house and open but there are 10 different keys they don't know know which one when they get there, what they do is they begin to experiment. They try the first, the second, no. The third, no. The fourth, the fifth, no. So the person is confused, and then later on they begin to repeat the same keys over on the same lock. So the keys to the kingdom, there are a bunch, it's a huge bunch. There are so many which you've entered into the kingdom of God with. God has said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom that you will enter into the kingdom by believing in Jesus. You enter with your keys. I know where you've come from, there are problems, go and use these keys. So you, from the time that you were born again and saved, you try this key, it's not the one. You try this other key, it's not the one. You experiment with another key for that lock, but it's not the one. You try over and over, 40 years later, trying, experimenting still, at the age of 80, and then you find yourself called by the Lord, and you let go. So, now I want to tell you, 
that I've discovered the secret. I've been told by the Holy Spirit. I want to teach you now of the keys of the kingdom of heaven, what they are. I want to teach you so you can open and enter in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is why the scriptures say, And he saved us from the power of darkness. And he translated us. He entered us into the kingdom of his own dear beloved son. So we have been brought into. That is why Jesus said, Jesus saw that if people misunderstand me here, they will think that I have come as a teacher of the law. But Jesus said to them, listen, the law is from the time of Moses up until John the Baptist. Now, things go according to the kingdom of heaven, which is being preached. And people enter in there by force. How? And those who do not enter in by force, they do not qualify to enter. When you pray and say, Father God, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. They are the ones who enter. And that is the reason of the king to the kingdom of heaven. That is why people have been followers of religion. When I was speaking with the Lord today, I was so amazed. It was about 2 a.m., but I was praying. What amazed, what amazed me is that Jesus was telling people who are sitting here, telling them, listen. He said, these people, they hold on to the law. They hold on to the prophets. Listen, let me tell you something. And they responded and said, yes. And Jesus said to them, the law is from the time of Moses to John the Baptist. From the time of John the Baptist onwards, it's just about the kingdom. People were like, hey. Jesus said, it's just the kingdom which is being preached. Ha. Huh? I was amazed. I asked myself, and the Holy Spirit said to me, Do you remember Moses, Elijah, and Jesus were together on a mountaintop and they were speaking? Do you know what they were talking about? And it's true that what their subject matter was, was not exposed. The Bible just says Jesus went to prayer at a mountain. When Jesus went to the mountain, he went with three disciples, with Peter, James, and John. He left them a little way. And he went forward from them and he began to pray. And then suddenly Moses appeared. Moses is the one who represents the law because the law came by his hand. Those five books are called the Torah or the law. The Torah means law. So Moses appeared who represents the law. And then Elijah appeared. And Elijah represents the prophets. You see... So when Jesus was speaking to them, Sirs, ladies and gentlemen, I have spoken to Moses at the mountain, eh, who represents the law. And they're also at the mountain. I've spoken with Elijah, who represents the prophets. They, everything they have bestowed upon me from this time forward, which the pace which I'm going with, listen to me. While he was saying such, Moses and Elijah were speaking to him, but Peter and the others, they came too, and they said, Hey, that's Moses. The thing that amazes us is that Moses died a long time ago and Peter and the other disciples, they do not know him. But the thing about the glory of God is that when it ascends, even if you don't know, you will know. If you don't understand, you will understand. They knew that it was Moses. They perceived that it was also Elijah and that they were speaking with Jesus. And then Peter and the other disciples, they ran and they said to Jesus. And they were thinking, what is Jesus being told by these men? When they arrived there, They said, now, we, the disciples, we hold on to the law. We hold on to the prophets. While they were thinking such, God spoke from heaven. And he said, this is my son. When Elijah and Moses went away, God decided now to speak to them and say, don't listen to Moses or to Elijah. God himself said, this is my beloved son with whom I am pleased. Do not listen to Elijah. Do not listen to Moses. Listen to him. When they began to listen to Jesus, that's when he began to say to them, the law was from the time of Moses up until John the Baptist. From now on, the pace is of the kingdom. And those who repent of their sins, those who repent of their sins, are those who enter into the kingdom. And in the kingdom, there are keys to open, to loosen things 
The kingdom is not a religion. The kingdom is the nation which you enter into. It's the heavenly nation which you enter into while you're here on earth. You enter therein. But the problem now which has come upon born again believers. Just take a look at your neighbor. Ask them, are you in the lounge room of the kingdom? Most people are in the lounge room of the kingdom. They're just at the entrance. It has now been that in the lounge room of the entrance there are sofas. And because the sofas are nice and there's a nice environment, people pray and they say, oh hallelujah, I'm saved. They just go to church, they sing, they give their tithe, and they go home. They go to church, they sing, they give their tithe, and they go home. They go to church, they speak in tongues, they give the tithe. That, that's the cycle which only pertains to the lounge room of the kingdom. But when you go deeper, there are keys of wealth to the kingdom which are yet to see that's why the bible says i'll give you treasures out of darkness it means go to the room of dark of treasures when you get the keys thereof that's why the bible says there'll be none who's barren amongst you it means that there's a room which you can open therein and your partner can come from there it means that the problem is that you have many keys but you don't know which key to use i want to lead you now without a doubt from tomorrow and in the coming days i'll begin to list the keys one after another of the kingdom so that from the lounge room the people of this church resurrection and the life we will not be found therein we will enter deeper further into the kingdom Look at your neighbor and ask them, are you in the lounge room of the kingdom or have you moved in deeper? That is why now, Jesus, his first sermons, his preaching, Matthew 4, 17. Jesus' interest was to make it crystal clear, ladies and gentlemen, there's a kingdom. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom, this kingdom, you enter into it by repenting. But you will see several things that I pray that they will touch your heart in the name of Jesus. Verse Luke chapter 4, verse 43. Luke chapter 4, verse 33. It is written, he said unto them, repeat the words, but he said to them, I must preach the kingdom to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. It means for that reason, for which reason, of preaching the good news, of the kingdom so there is a kingdom the sum of all the teachings of Jesus is that you had a kingdom that kingdom you were stolen it was stolen from you by the devil the blood of Jesus the cross and his resurrection was not the purpose as to why he came to earth those he was given us tools in order to guard the kingdom and to for us to enter therein so now people have just emphasized the tools but the keys they do not have i i was told by the lord kwajima you must tell the people that that which they have they've already entered into the kingdom and with the tools they have the blood of jesus they have the keys which is the word of god they are just in the lounge they're only in the lounge and they're being uh, astonished up until the point where they're being called by the Lord to be called by the Lord it means for you to be relocated from one nation to another because the kingdom of heaven has already come here you remember those words which the Lord has previously told me God told me one day Kwajima the pillars and the foundation have already been established the foundation and the pillars have already been fulfilled and established and one day he said to me, the foundation has already balanced. As it is in heaven, so it is here on earth. I did not understand him at all. But what he was meaning is that the kingdom has already come. The problem is that the kingdom exists. When you believe in Jesus, in heaven there is the kingdom of God. And King Jesus is also there. On the earth there is also the kingdom of God. And King Jesus is also here. He has now come 
to tell people that you can enter into the kingdom by believing in Jesus. When you say, Jesus, I confess you with my tongue. I believe in you with my heart. And you enter into the kingdom. Firstly, when you enter into the kingdom, you begin the culture of the kingdom. You begin with its culture. In this kingdom, we do not steal. Herein, we do not steal. Herein, we do not commit sexual immorality. It's the law of the kingdom. We do not commit sexual immorality. We do not remain where we're a fashion which leaves our body naked as where you have come from previously. In this kingdom, we do not gossip, neither do we do sex before marriage. But your problem is that you've entered into this kingdom, you have relocated into it, but you hold on to the law of the former place where you've come from. But there are police in the kingdom which capture you, arrest you. Why? Because you've broken the law. So you find someone in the kingdom, they're sick. They've been captured by the police of the kingdom. They were there in the lounge. They were arrested in the lounge, breaking the laws of the kingdom. Today I ask you to know that you are in the kingdom and that you must know that there are keys in the kingdom, of the kingdom. Tell your neighbor, hello, are you in the lounge room or are you using the keys? There are those who, it's their luck, it's their luck by which they're able to unlock. They unlock, they unlock, they unlock and they're able to enter and buy a car. They tell you, this car I've received and I'll never lose it. Why? Because the key themselves, they were able to unlock by luck. But there are keys to factories, to houses, traveling to far lands of your engagement, of being loved and of favor. These keys now, they exist. And I want us to learn how to, these keys, one after another, when you receive a key, you open and enter there into the kingdom and continue on with your work. In the name of Jesus, say amen. The kingdom of God. Now, Luke chapter 12, verse 32. I'm giving you just an introduction. I'm just giving you an introduction, but there's something which we want to commence. Haven't you ever asked yourself, here at this church, why we say, we'll preach until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of the Lord and of Christ. Do you know the meaning thereof? Do you know what the meaning of this that the kingdoms of the world become the kingdoms of the Lord. It means that the kingdom which you've entered into, when you hold on to its culture, when you hold on to its laws, when you hold on to its constitution, when you hold on to its traditions, the traditions of the kingdom which you've entered into, you begin to infect others. You infect others. You infect others until the whole nation, you have infected it with the kingdom of God. And that is when... We will say that we've seen God at work. It means that the kingdom of God has expanded. God has his law. But those who are outside of the kingdom, they do not hold on to them. God has his constitution. But those who are outside, they do not know of it. That's why if you tell someone that you're not supposed to commit pre-marital sex, they'll say, what? There's no such thing as that. Is that even very possible? The people, they will even ask you, are there such human beings as such? There's no such thing as that. Why? Because they are outside of the kingdom. Outside of the kingdom, they do not have that law. When you enter into the kingdom, it has its laws. Do not kill. Do not commit sexual morality. Do not bear false witness. There are the laws which you're supposed to hold on to. And it's there the laws, the constitution. You remember at the time when we were going about the constitution assembly here in Tanzania, it was a big issue. Why? Because it's the mother lord. It's the chief principle law of the land. So when someone enters into the kingdom... They say, I'm saved. But it's not that you are saved. More than that, you have changed countries. You have changed nations. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us and brought us into the kingdom of his dear beloved son. Say, I, I have been given the kingdom. If you have it indeed. So now there are others who are here who are not in the kingdom. They're in religion. It's called the assemblies of God. When you're in the kingdom, you become a citizen of the kingdom. And that is why the Apostle Paul said our citizenship is of heaven above. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. That is why when you want to leave the earth, we do not die. What happens is that we change nations. We go to the headquarters. The kingdom of heaven 
has opened a branch which we are in. We are in the kingdom of heaven, but here on earth. When you live here and you get keys, you hold on to the laws, you hold on to the constitution, you go around with the traditions of heaven. And then when you die, it's you're translated to the headquarters there in heaven above. Because it's traditions and it's custom, you've already been um, used to it since here on earth. When people, when you're translated to the kingdom uh, of heaven, to the headquarters up in heaven, you do not kick, you do not make a fuss. That's why when we see the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of the Lamb, of the Lord. It's that the kingdom of God has expanded. It's that you have influence. When we increase here in Dar es Salaam city, when we become a congregation of one million strong, our tradition, our customs of the kingdom, it fills this place. That is why Jesus said to his disciples, that's why the people said to the disciples, you want to fill Jerusalem with your teachings because they taught about the resurrection of the dead because they entered into that kingdom and they began to expand their traditions their customs they expanded and people were amazed that they were shocked and said why is it that now you want to come swallow us i see in the coming days that the that the laws and the customs of the kingdom will swallow up the nation of tanzania such that tanzania will become the kingdom of the lamb of god I am a citizen in the kingdom. I like it when people look for money. For those who are business minded, make a t-shirt that says citizen of the kingdom and come sell it to me. I'll be the first person to purchase. Do you know why people don't come to God? Do you know why people do not get saved? You tell them, come to Jesus, get saved, get saved. They don't know the meaning thereof. What is it when you get saved? They're so used to you. They're used to Anglicanism in that they say we are Anglicans, we are saved. We are the Seventh-day Adventists. You hear them say, we are the Seventh-day Adventists. You say that we are the Catholics, we are charismatic Catholics. It becomes a religion. But it's a born-again person's religion that a person has entered into with their same act. Contrary to the law of the kingdom. Those who tell you about the kingdom today, they have come from the kingdom which you have come from. It's only the wise who are able to understand. Luke 12, 32. Jesus now was telling those who were there. He said to them, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus was telling them, this is, know that you have a kingdom. This is a kingdom that you used to pray for in the past. That, that kingdom come, that will be done. That, this is that kingdom. Now, that is why Jesus, his emphasis was on the kingdom. Jesus, he pleases me much. When he died, and he was buried, he was raised from the dead. Him, his issue was just the kingdom. If you Google the word kingdom, Google the word kingdom, he wanted people to understand kingdom. He said, what should I like in the kingdom of heaven too? He saw that the people did not understand, what should I like in the kingdom of heaven too? He said, what should I liken it to? I should liken it to a business person who's looking for pearls. He found a great pearl. He went and sold all his other pearls and he went and he purchased that one pearl. The kingdom of God is like a pearl. The kingdom of heaven is worthy of you leaving all and entering therein. He said, what should I liken the kingdom of heaven to? Let me liken it to a woman who was preparing some flour. When she's preparing the flour, she put in, she put in some yeast. In the Kiswahili Bible, what is it called? It's called like yeast, like leaven, to leaven the dough, and it, it causes the whole dough to inflate. The kingdom of God is of the characteristic that when you enter into a certain place, it is not that we imitate them, it is them who imitate us, because we are that yeast. We expand, we influence people, they begin to say soldier, soldier, they begin to say soul, uh, resurrection of the life. It's not that we imitate them, no, we are the yeast, we influence them.
Jesus, he wondered, what should I liken the kingdom of heaven to? What should I liken it to? Look in the Bible, there's a particular chapter in which Jesus said, what should I liken it to? He said, he said let me liken it to a sower who went out to plant his seed. What should I liken it to? Let me liken it to a large net which is cast into the sea. What should I liken it to? Until from the time he, when he died and he was raised from the dead, when the disciples heard him preaching, kingdom, 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 they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the Israelites, the kingdom? The Jews were thinking a military a kingdom, a kingdom of the military force. And Jesus said to them, no. He said to them, no. He began to teach them regards to things as such. When he was raised from the dead, he did not preach about the blood of the Lamb. He began to preach about the kingdom. Now, we have been delayed because we think that we will enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is a nation. It has its forces, its soldiers, which are called the angels. Jesus said, do you not think that I can pray to my father that he can ask, give me a legion, a legion of 12 angels? And people don't know that it is written legion. Legion means 6,000 soldiers. So when Jesus said 12,000 soldiers, he meant 12 times 6,000 angels that were being summoned. If they arrived, what would it have been like? Jesus said, I'm supposed to die, but I cannot use these angels. These angels are those which um, the man of God, Elisha, had seen. Horses and charts of fire. Those who surround you have also been surrounded. Those who surrounded you have also been surrounded by the forces of God. They have surrounded you with curses, bad luck, and misfortune, and, and they themselves have been surrounded. You are not one who's just born again. You are a child of the kingdom. You've entered into the kingdom. You are a citizen of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I am a soul. I am a citizen of the kingdom. If you call me citizen of the kingdom, I feel great joy. Better than being calling me born again. I'm a citizen. Of an incorruptible kingdom of God. Now then when you are such. Every time you learn something. And you teach yourself. You must ask yourself. What are the laws herein? Go to the United States. And try to apply the laws of Tanzania. You will be returned. Exported that very day. If you go to uh, the United States. To shout as we do. It's not permitted. There's a local public interruption. Even as I'm shouting here, hey, hey, hey. If I do that in the United States, it brings me a situation which they will bring me back home. What does that mean? It means that the law of Tanzania does not work there. If you use the law of Tanzania, you'll be arrested by the police there and be put in jail. So now you are saved. You've entered into the kingdom, a nation. But the problem is that you've entered in with another law. You'll be arrested. That is why you are arrested. Look at your neighbor and ask them, do you know the laws of the kingdom? Here at Resurrection and the Life, we teach the laws of the kingdom. Ask your neighbor, do you know the constitution of the kingdom? Ask them, do you know the customs of the kingdom? Do you know the traditions of the kingdom? Do you know the soldiers, the forces of the kingdom? Do you know the benefits of the kingdom? Do you know the rights of the kingdom? You are praying for even your basic rights. Yesterday, God said to me, take the constitution of Tanzania and read the rights of the citizens of Tanzania. It is a right for every citizen to be educated. You see, that's what the law of Tanzania says. It's a right for every citizen to be educated. It's a right for every person to be committed to religion and coerced as they own, as they decide. These are rights which you do not need to ask or request for. Do not say, I ask for rights. But now you are asking for rights to the kingdom which you don't even know. Here where you are, you're asking for rights which you automatically have already. Those rights you have by the fact that you are a citizen. How is it that one becomes a citizen? By birth. Citizen is, citizenship is attained by birth. 
And that is why we say to be saved is to be born a second time. You are born the first time in the land of sin. You are born a second time in the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand what it means? You know, many people do not understand what being born again is. It means that you're born of your father while you're at home. But now you're here in the nation Tanzania. But now there's another land which for you to be a citizen of, you need to be born therein. So now you pray, Father God, I come to you. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Starting today, I receive Jesus to be Lord. It is then that you are born in that kingdom. You become a citizen of the kingdom of God. Not by asking or requesting citizenship. You are a citizen by birth. And you are a citizen by birth. Receive the rights of the kingdom. Receive the language of the kingdom. Receive the customs and the traditions of the kingdom. And the soldiers of the kingdom stir themselves up. Stir yourself up. When God said that to me, I knew that we have arrived. If, if it's flour, if it's a uh, dried porridge, we have put the spoon into it. You see, citizenship, you can get it by request. You must advertise in the newspaper for a certain period of days. You must remain in Tanzania without traveling outside. You must do A, B, C, D, e, A, B, C, D. And then later on, you get that right. And then after that permit, but with kingdom citizenship, you get it. When you are saved, that's why when somebody comes here to pray, but they're not a citizen of heaven, you're just wasting your time. Because what you're praying, you're praying to a king whom you do not know. God said to me, you know, you people there, Kwajima, you are like foolish, ignorant. You're like ignorant citizens because you do not know your rights. You are saved. I've been forgiven. I thank the Lord. I had no peace. But now I have peace. But those are keys. You've entered into the lounge room of the kingdom. You've been given keys to the kingdom. Now open something. And you've already been told whatsoever you loose by using these keys. King, the heavens say, go ahead. When you use these keys, by using these keys, heaven says to you, go ahead. Continue with what you're doing. But if you do not loosen in heaven, they say, remain in the lounge room. It does not concern us. You will come to the headquarters later on to enjoy what you could have enjoyed there on earth. When you get saved, you have entered into the kingdom. You are called a child of the kingdom. But when you enter therein, God said, I will give you keys of the kingdom. The kings of the kingdom, not the keys, key of the kingdom, keys. When you enter to the kingdom, you do not need a key. Why? Because Jesus himself is the door to the kingdom. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. I am the... When you enter there into the lounge room, you do not need a key because Jesus himself is the way. The king of, of the king, the king of the kingdom, he himself is the door to enter therein, the gate. When you enter to the kingdom, you don't need a door. You don't need a key. Because Jesus himself is the door to the kingdom. But you enter into the kingdom. Jesus himself, being the door, he's given you a bunch of keys. You have a bunch of keys. A set, many sets thereof. But there, because it's the kingdom of God. There where you've entered, there's its joy. You say, Jesus, I love him. I feel the peace. I thank God. It's so good to be in Jesus, but you're just wandering around in the lounge, going around by foot, because you have not gotten the key to open for door, the door onto vehicles. Those who are around about in the lounge room, they are just going around with small vehicles because they do not have keys to get land cruisers. they are those who have entered into the kingdom, they've got keys to open a, to a helicopter, and others began to complain at them, where did they get this chopper from? Because the keys, they have them in their hands, and they die with them, and they remain in the lounge room with those keys without opening. But I'm telling you, the people of resurrection and the life, you're not supposed to remain in the lounge room. You're supposed to enter into the inner rooms, and we have the keys in the name of Jesus. You today, when you go home, I'm giving you an assignment for tomorrow. Read up on the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. There's no place where Jesus, you'll find him teaching anything other than the kingdom. 
you feel Jesus walking with his disciples, he'll say to them, what should I liken the kingdom of heaven to, the kingdom of God to? He went to Pilate. Pilate said to him, are you a king? And he said to him, you say I am a king. But my kingdom is not of this world, it is of heaven. Here where you are, there is a nation which is in heaven. That's why he said to them, when you pray, do not pray, to, do not forget to pray, thy kingdom come. You know, I was asking God, God was my very good friend yesterday, the day before, the previous week, and then I said, and then God asked me, why is it that people aren't saved with great revival, with great stir? And he asked me, why isn't the whole of Dar Salaam saved? And I said to God, it's because you haven't saved them. He said to me, no. 2,000 years ago, I said, the harvest is ripe. But 2,000 years later, how do you think this harvest, this ripe harvest is? I said, and I thought, and I thought to myself, it could be that this harvest is rotten. The thought came, it is that the harvest has rotten. I said this at heart. And God said to me, what you said in your heart is true. That's why people are hard to get saved. They were ripe to getting saved until the point where they rotted. They hurt a lot until they began to rot. That's why the Lord said to me, that is why I have given you the resurrection and the life. That those who are rotting, you should give them resurrection and the life and enter to the kingdom of heaven with them. I said to him, why are you very calm today? But now listen carefully. Listen. Listen carefully, let me tell you something. He said to me another thing. He said, they have already began to rot. You cannot just go and harvest them. They have been rotting. That's why when you say it's the hour of the resurrection and the life, you, hear, you feel in the spirit something coming alive. Because that is the pace. That is the, the pace at which we're supposed to go to those who have began to rot and they died and they fell down. So now, since the 2000, from 2,000 years ago, Jesus said the harvest is ripe. So now, he said to me another reason, the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ready. But pray to the Lord of the harvest that he should send laborers. The laborers who are supposed to go into the harvest field are in the lounge room. There are bishops who are in the lounge room. There are apostles who are in the lounge room. There are padres who are in the lounge room. Now the Lord of the harvest wants to send them now. Those that he wants to send are in the lounge room of the kingdom. He says, you have, how can you go and teach when you haven't entered into all rooms? Salvation is a lifestyle. It's a nation. You enter into it. When you hold on to its laws very well, and to its constitution, and its customs, and its traditions, and its glory, when you hold fast unto them, you will not look for money. Money is in the kingdom. Silver and gold belong unto me, says the Lord. The problem with you is that you are captured, arrested by the police of the kingdom time and again. In that kingdom, they do not gossip. You've entered into the kingdom and you gossip, you gossip, you gossip. The police of the kingdom, they arrest you. But, let me give you an example. A very good example that I've been told to give you. For example, the Israelites were in Egypt. I said Egypt. Everybody say Egypt. And God, he put the Israelites in a land called Goshen. In the whole of the nation of Egypt, there's a certain portion of it which was called Goshen. So the Israelites were in Goshen. It's like, take for example Dar es Salaam city, but the Israelites were in the, um, the, the place called Tabata, Tabata Bima. So now the whole nation was smitten by plagues. When the plagues went into Egypt, when they got into that place, called Goshen, they pass by the side. It means that in the neighbor's house they sleep hungry, but in this house they sleep full in the kingdom. While others are complaining about life, 
and that is the time when you'll be able to that's the time when you'll be building a second third house people will be complaining about life that, of its hardships but you are in Goshen in the kingdom of God say amen that is why this kingdom now that we have entered into the kingdom but we are few our influence has not spread abroad we're supposed to multiply amongst ourselves we're supposed to fill the earth when we multiply and when we fill the earth, everywhere we go, we bring our culture of the kingdom. Do not go to a certain place and imitate those whom you've gone to. You are the yeast. They are the bread. They are the flour. Amen. That is why one young man sent me a message one day. I don't know if he's here. I, I don't know him. He said to me, Pastor, Father, I... He's a church trainee, but in his family, everyone is Muslim. He became saved and he came to the church to learn. But today, his father is marrying the fourth wife. So of the men, the young men who have been called to partake in the celebrations, I've been invited to partake. What am I supposed to do? So now, this young man, he's in the kingdom of God. He is yeast. But now what is staying in place is contrary. They have become the yeast, and he, this young man, has become the batch of flour. The batch of flour is like this. Who here has ever cooked donuts? Yes, even me. You sift the dough. And the dough which you prepare, that is, that is your batch. When you prepare that dough, you take a pinch of yeast, just a pinch, and you'll be amazed that that flour, that dough, it fills the whole pot. So now we are not that flour. We are that pinch, that yeast. When you enter into a certain place, you begin to expand with your customs. When you enter into a certain place, they do not pray at night before they sleep, but now they pray because of you. You enter into a certain place. The TV was um, showing forth all manner of rubbish, but now you put the Christian TV channels. You are the yeast. There were people at work who were speaking gossip and bad words, but now they are quiet because you are there. You have become the yeast. The kingdom of God, I will liken it to yeast, which a woman put into a batch of dough and it expanded. I command your office to expand in the name of Jesus because you have entered to inflate. We have the power to influence, but no one has the power to influence us. A child of the kingdom. A child of the kingdom. So now you discern, I'm saved and I love Jesus. And you worship. And you say, I worship you, Lord. I worship you. When you are as such, you are in the lounge room. There's a certain joy that you feel, peace and calm. When you compare it to the nation that you've come from, you, you've come from Burundi, in all manner of chaos and warfare and, and you've entered into another country even though you have no food you see the relief it's that you've entered into the lounge room tell your neighbor kingdom tell them I am a child of the kingdom tell them again I am a child of the kingdom tell them I'm a child of the kingdom Matthew 13 verse 11 let me show you again. Why is it that people have entered into the kingdom, but their lives are just the same? I ask God, God, why is it that when I say something, even though I haven't made great effort to find something, it finds me? Why is it that when I say something, there are certain things that I say, I say, I say, I declare the first time, it comes to pass. Until I myself, I'm like, wow. I said I will grow wings and fly. When I say the second time, the third time, the fourth. Later on, that thing which I've said, you'll be amazed. It comes after me. It follows me. God said to me, you are performing as along in line with the customs of the kingdom. 
This kingdom is not a quiet kingdom. It's one of declaration. You declare the Lord has spoken. The Lord said, let there be light. The Lord said, the waters which are above. God said, let grass disappear. God said, God said. And then later, God saw that which he said was good. In this kingdom, it's about declaring. It's about speaking, saying that kingdom law you're supposed to enact it by declaration. This kingdom is not one in which we keep silence. You must declare. You must say, I can do all things through he who strengthens me. You'll be amazed that you begin to be able. This is the law of the kingdom. Let's read the scripture. Matthew 13, 11. He answered and said to them, Because... It has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. So, in fact, when you enter therein, there, is, there are mysteries which you're supposed to know because they've been given unto you. But them over there, it has not been given unto them. They, it has not been given to them to know these mysteries. That is why you see the Bible says, you are our ambassadors. We're in the kingdom, but there are mysteries therein. So, these mysteries, God will begin to reveal these things to us, which were told to the prophets. Let me tell you something. Those who do not read are as those who do not know how to read. Those who do not read are no different than those who do not know how to read. Those who have many keys at hand, and they don't know which lock they are for, are the same as those who do not have keys. There's someone who's supposed to ask God for forgiveness, because you have delayed yourself. You pray, you say, Father God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to stand for us, establish us, so that we should be strong, so that we should be able to enter into the kingdom. It means that in your mind, it means that in your mind, there's an attitude, a, const a perception that we have not entered the kingdom. Religion has done bad things to us. Religion has done bad things to us. That they've come from certain religions. Even ancestral spirits and worshipping them, that's a religion. In that religion you're taught that you need to enter into the kingdom. You're being taught that you need to enter into the kingdom of God. Father God, we pray unto you that you should help us to enter into the kingdom, enter into the kingdom of God. We are in there. We are in there, but you do not know that you are in there. And the king of kings, the president, he's there. That is why it's written that you purchased unto God the sons by your blood, that they should be a kingdom and they should reign on earth. Amen. Say, in the name of Jesus, I, you know what finished people's strength is being born again. You tell them, you're born again, I'm also born again. Are you born again? Yes, I'm born again. God said to me one thing and I was so amazed. He said, this word born again, which means being born a second time, how many times has it been written in the Bible? I discovered that it's been written only once in the Bible. And one person was told this word and they were being preached this word at night. One man by the name of Nicodemus. John chapter 3. God was speaking with Nicodemus at night. A man went. He was hiding. He went sneaking to see Jesus. And he was told to be born again. That's when he asked, what does it mean to be born a second time? Do you mean that I enter into my mother's womb and then I'm born again? He said to him, you are a teacher in Israel and you do not know these things. He said, that which is born of spirit is spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. He said, now what should I do? He said to him, to be born a second time is that you are born in another country. When you receive Jesus, in order for you to be a citizen, for you to become a citizen, in God's kingdom, which is a country, when you receive Christ as a personal savior, you enter into a country. And the only way you can have permanent citizenship in a country is by being born in that country. You were born by your mother, and now you need to be born a second time in that country, which is the kingdom. 
you were born the first time by a biological mother and she fed you. So now there's another country which is called the kingdom of heaven which is here. So now you're supposed to be born in there by believing in Jesus. Believing in Jesus is to relocate from, from this land to another land. Now, when we're in this new country, there's a means of conducting your business and your trade in the kingdom. In the kingdom, there kingdom, there's kingdom economics. They're in the kingdom. There are ways of building houses in the kingdom. You begin to expand yourself. And it comes to a certain point where you don't tell people, come to Jesus. Because this is the land. You know, when you declare, when you advertise tourism, you do not uh, advertise your prime minister. When you advertise, when you engage in marketing for your, for your nation, marketing for tourism for your nation, you do not tell them, come see our president, come see our president Kikwete. You show them um, the mountains, you show them Mount Kilimanjaro, you show them the land, the way it is. When people see the way the nation is, they say, oh, there's great beaches in that nation, there are great elephants there, and then the foreigners decide to come. Do not declare, talk about only your king. And that's why when you tell people Jesus says, they do not understand you. You're selling the king, or you're supposed to be selling the land. You're supposed to tell them, when you come here where I am, there is life, hallelujah. Sell the land. But why do not we say anything about the land? Because we're in the land and we have debt. You're scared about talking about the nation, and you say, come this side, come, because on this side there are debts, and you yourself, you have debt. You're afraid of marketing the land. You're... You market the king. You market the king. You see, Jesus says, Jesus heals. And the king himself is tired. In this nation, why don't you sell the nation? Market the nation. That is why you, you must be wealthy. When people look at you and say, where did you get all this wealth from? You said, I got a key at Kawe. I was a normal born again person. I went to Kawe's direction on the life and they gave me keys to enter therein. I had many keys which had confused me. I don't know whether this is for the kitchen or for the garage. I was trying for eight years, experimenting the keys at the locks for eight years. Why am I like this? Because the key that you went to was a Tanzanian Assemblies of God. And you thought that the keys would unlock for you things that you need in life. You tried another church, the same thing. And then you begin to whinge. And you think that the key to your life's miseries, mi misery is to get married, but you get married and your problems are still there. That's why you see people that are in the kingdom, they haven't prospered, and they think that their pro prosperity, their blessings are in getting married. And when they got married, they didn't see any blessings, and now they want to backslide. Because they thought that, I'm faithful. Listen, you are faithful. You give the tithe. You love Jesus. You make good spiritual wolf, eh? But if you do not have keys, it doesn't matter. You're supposed to have keys to the kingdom. It's written, I'll give you keys to the kingdom. Jesus says that. And whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you loose, will be loosened unto you. That is why you know. In things that I really thank God about. When God tells me something, I leave it there, right there. I'm like David. When God tells me that very moment, I leave it be. Why is it you, Kwajima, you've entered into the lounge, and you got the keys, and you entered therein? Why don't you give the keys to other people? Because, sir, I don't know. When I entered, I opened the first door, it opened. But, in fact, we realize that there are keys. There's a place where Jesus said to the Pharisees, You have deprived others of keys. And those who received the keys and wanted to enter, them you refused for them to do so. Keys of the kingdom. So now when you ask people here, are you saved? They say I'm saved. For how many years? They tell you for four. Now, how is life? They tell you I don't have money, I don't have this, I don't have that. Because we have been fed that. You, to enter into heaven, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Now I'll teach you tomorrow the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is in heaven, but is being brought here on earth. 
When you believe in Jesus, you enter into the kingdom of heaven, which is here on earth. Thy kingdom come. That is why Jesus said to his disciples, do not say the kingdom is there. The kingdom is here in our midst. I am a child of the kingdom. There are other things I tell God, not by asking him, Father, I'm a child of the kingdom. If I use those words, God will say to me, hey, my child. There are things that the father cannot do, that, that the father will do without the child requesting, you know. A child in the house, when they begin to cry and cry, you will know what you will do until you discover why they're crying. You as a parent, they'll cry, they cry, they cry. You try them, hey, is it fever? Hey, are you sick? Are you hungry? Until you discover. They know themselves, I do not want to speak many words. I just want to show that I'm a child of the king. They just cry, cry, cry. You will seek out yourself why they are crying. These are the rights of the kingdom. When you cry, you are heard. Call unto the Lord because he can be found. They cried unto the Lord, and he heard them and delivered them from their distresses. Repeat these words in the name of Jesus. So there are people who are here, you are born again. But being born again does not threaten Satan. He's, you think yourself, you are just born again, you will enter into heaven. You've been born the second time in the nation of heaven. Jesus said to his disciples, Just as I am not of this world, so also they are not of this world. I am of heaven, and they also are of heaven. And you enter into that kingdom. Firstly, even before you began to open with the keys, when you hold on to the customs, just the customs, just the customs of the kingdom, the traditions, the constitution of the kingdom is the Bible. The law of the kingdom is the Bible. The keys of the kingdom are the verses which have been written in the Bible to open different places. So now you, you don't know which key opens where, but the scriptures, verses you have. That's why you can know, memorize the whole of Galatians, but your life will not change. You can memorize the whole of Galatians. You can recite it all the way down, but your life is still there. Why? Because you have keys. And their purpose thereof, you do not know. Say, in the name of Jesus... Father, I ask you to open my eyes for the kingdom. I am a child of 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 the kingdom. When you are a child, there are things which are domestic. That an adult, a child, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, you don't ask your mom, Mom, I ask you for water. You know where the fridge is and you go and you take it yourself because you're a child of the house. There are other prayers. You don't say, I ask, I request. You say, I take in the name of Jesus. I take in the name of Jesus. I capture in the name of Jesus. So you, those things, you pray. I ask you, Lord, to help me that I should have good health. When you're in the kingdom, health is your right. Because in the kingdom, there are health. There are rights to perfect health. There are rights unto your health in the kingdom. I take healing in the name of Jesus. When you tell yourself I should cry unto the Lord until he heals me, that means that in your mind you're not ready to receive the healing, but if you say in the kingdom that I've entered into in one of my rights, I read the law of the land. The constitution says every citizen has a right to medical care. In the law of Tanzania, you have a right to medical care. And then it says, every person has a right to freedom. So in the kingdom I've entered into, there's a right of life. Right. Life is a right. I do not say again, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, this and that. You begin to say, I take life, for it is written. One of the laws of that kingdom, you know when people argue and they take each other to court, they consult the laws. That is when I remembered one particular instance, Satan came to me and said to me, Take your witness, Kwajima, let's go to court. 
But in fact, it was just a kingdom affair. That there are certain things which he has tried to, he's seen that I have made a mistake in the kingdom. And Satan said to me, let's go to the courts of your kingdom. But we unfortunately, we don't know we're in the kingdom and we don't know the laws. But then I said, I will not go to court, the courts are of the world. But there's a law. In the kingdom of God, which you're in, there is a law. There are laws. Do not gossip. Do not commit sexual immorality. Do not bear false witness. Honor your parents. If you live according to those, it's an issue, it's an issue, it's an issue. You'll be seen as someone who's born again, you're supposed to be going to church. But every time you walk, must you ask yourself, this which I've done, is it in line with the law of the kingdom? The angels look at you and they wonder. You are in Rwanda. You're supposed to be driving on the right-hand side of the road. You're driving on the left-hand side of the road as we do in Tanzania. But you get an accident there in the kingdom. Then you see someone, I've been fired from my job. Because in the kingdom, listen, let me tell you, in the kingdom, in the kingdom, there's a means of how you're supposed to get money. In the kingdom, if you want money, there's a way of getting it. It's not like what you're used to from where you've come from in the world. In this kingdom... You need to pay tax. You see, where you come from, you receive your income and the tax of the country has been cut. In your salary slip, tax has already been deducted. Now you enter into this kingdom, but the tax of this kingdom you do not want to pay. A person has entered into this kingdom and within this kingdom there is a tax, but the tithe they try to dodge it and then they begin to pray father god i ask you to help me help me lord help me to prosper have you paid the tax of this land and then you begin to say to god you've abandoned me you've abandoned me father you've abandoned me indeed i do not see anything in the kingdom when you enter they do not wear charms they do not use all manner of diverse divination tools In this kingdom, they do not dress as you do. You have already performed, um, worn contrary to the kingdom um, uh, fashions and wardrobe. You've worn clothes or tights which are very tight on your body. Or a woman where you've got your cleavage hanging out. And we, we, wor we wonder about this person. Do they not know the laws of this kingdom? They come into the kingdom and their cleavage is hanging out. You wonder at this person. The laws of the kingdom. You tell them in this kingdom they do not walk with their chest exposed. You must tell them in the kingdom they do not dress as such. In the kingdom they wear tights. They wear leggings. And they walk. And then they pray, God I ask you to help me. How will you be helped if you already broken the law of dress code? In this kingdom, there is a dress code. Here in this kingdom, you do not speak as you wish. You're not supposed to gossip. When you say to someone, look at them, look at how they think so loftily of themselves. Already you're mistaken. That's why Satan says, bring your witness and let's go to court. It could be that in fact, we have gone against the law, but Satan has seen, has seen the sin. They tell us law number eight You've already gone against it. Let's go to court. And he drags you therein. That is why Jesus. One person said to Jesus. He said to Jesus. He said to him, Lord, what should I do to enter to the kingdom of God? He was a lawyer. Jesus said to him, do you know the law? Do you see how what Jesus is asking him? He asked him, do you know the law? Do you know the laws herein? And he said to him, I know the laws and I've been faithful unto them from childhood. He's already tried to hold on to the laws of another land. You see, 
Someone can be in Tanzania, but all they know is American laws. He said to him, I know the laws. He said to them, I know. I'm in Tanzania, but these laws of the United Kingdom, I know them. I've been holding fast to them since my childhood. And he said to them, so, do this. In this kingdom, you are valuable. So sell everything that you have and follow me. It means sell everything you have and enter therein. This kingdom is so valuable that you lose everything which you have therein and you enter therein and you get new things which come about by the principles of the kingdom. So that's why you see when somebody gets saved, if they're very wealthy, oftentimes they become very poor. They'll tell you, Pastor, the moment I got saved, business went bad. It's because first you need to lose that which you have. I'm not saying that if you're wealthy, you'll become poor. No, but God has a normalcy that when you get saved, you've come with wealth, which you achieved contrary to the kingdom laws. When you enter into the kingdom, you have these, the wealth, but the law and forces of the kingdom, they look at you and they say, this wealth, you gained it by killing. This wealth, you got it by consulting sorcerers. You'll be amazed. You'll wonder at how your wealth disappears. Jesus said, that wealth of yours, get rid of it, divide it to people, and then you'll enter into the kingdom. That man did not know the secret that in the kingdom there are things, that all those things which he achieved outside in the world, he was supposed to let go of them. And when he comes into the kingdom by holding fast into the Lord, he will gain even more than that which he earned in the world. That's why Jesus said, what should I like in the kingdom of heaven to? There is a person who was searching, there was a businessman who's looking for treasures. He found the treasure in somebody's land. He went and he sold everything that he had. Firstly, I was amazed that he went to somebody else's farm and he found treasures. What he did is he hid that treasure first. So that example of the treasure, read it in the Bible. While he was going around, he discovered treasure in another person's farm. But the owner of the farm did not know. So what he did is he hid that treasure in that same land without informing the owner of the land. And then he went to sell everything that he had so that he should go and buy that farm, that plot of land. When they were bargaining the price of the farm, he knew that there were treasures therein. It means that to enter into the kingdom of God, it's worth it. It's worth it to leave everything else behind and to enter into the kingdom of God. To enter into the kingdom of God. It's worth it. I don't know how else to put this. It is worth it to leave everything behind. Because everything you leave behind, you will gain if you keep the laws, the principles, customs, and traditions and the rights of the kingdom. I am a son of that kingdom. You are a daughter of that kingdom. But the problem is that you are a son or a daughter unknowingly. You are a child of the kingdom. You are a child of the king. But you are a child who is mal malinformed. So, when you find a child at home who is 16 years old, but you continue to feed them and to give them, dress them up, you bathe them, it's the same as you not having a child. Tell your neighbor, hello. Tell them, are you in the kingdom or are you just saved? They tell you, I am a charismatic Christian. That is. That is why I started our business classes. So that people should learn business and that in the kingdom, there's how to conduct your business. You'll not conduct business as the way you previously used to. Jesus said, conduct trade until I come back. You possess great wealth. Those people who despised you, they'll see you. That this person who got saved, and we resisted him here and there. He went there to Cowie to resurrection of the life church. But then you, you go from one strength to another strength in your financial breakthroughs. You don't even tell them about Jesus. Because you're marketing your land. You show them the elephants, you show them the giraffes, the birds. 
You sell the land instead of telling them about your king only. Another person is here. This message uh, which I'm speaking today is for someone. Completely. I know. I know. You're in the kingdom, but you don't have the keys. You're in the kingdom, you've been experimenting one key after another against the luck. Try that luck. Try that luck. You've tried and tried again until you've thought to yourself, these bunch of keys. Having a bunch of keys without knowing which lock they unlock is the same as not having keys at all. Have you understood me, hey? And now I'm commencing that session because we want to capture Tanzania that it should be the kingdom of the Lord, but we are in the lounge only. We need to expand this kingdom, this incorruptible kingdom. Expand, expand, expand! How do we expand? When you get the keys, that's how. You have entered therein by believing in Jesus. If you have not believed in Jesus, you have not entered into the kingdom. Everything that you pray, Father God, is like a drunk. You're like a drunk who's just speaking. You know me, the way I see me, the way you see me, I have a helicopter, but you don't even have shoes. Because in getting saved, firstly, you enter into the kingdom. It is possible that you are in the kingdom, but you did not know. Enter into the kingdom. I ask for everyone now to arise. I've decided to use that time. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. And to us have been granted the mysteries of the kingdom. Repeat again, the mysteries of the kingdom. This kingdom it's not that it's being created today, it has existed. Matthew 25, Matthew 25, 34, it is written, And then the king will tell those who are on his right hand, Come ye who are blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom which has been prepared for you since the foundation of the earth. God has already pre-established the kingdom. So now these guys have gone to the headquarters. They're in the land of the kingdom, but they've been called to the headquarters. The heavens are the heavens of the Lord. Mark 11, 24 to 25, he says, he says in the Bible, one key which, we'll look at one particular key, which a person has entered into the kingdom, and they have not been able to receive, what, it's because they lack a key, and this key could be forgiveness, say forgiveness. Normally, if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And if you're not forgiven, you are a sinner. And God does not hear the prayers of the sinner. You see that. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And if you do not forgive, you will be a sinner. Let me read two or three scriptures. Mark 11. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. When you stand to pray, like as we're about to do now, there is someone who has really annoyed you. And it's not supposed, it's actual, it's true. They are accusing you of something that everybody completely agrees that you are the guilty party they have annoyed you so much but god says forgive them if you do not forgive them you will not be forgiven of your trespasses if you do not forgive you stand there as a sinner and the bible says god does not hear the prayers of the sinner so here you do not have the key to enter in you don't have the keys you see so therefore There are people, they don't have keys to enter therein. And I want to say just one thing as we're about to finish. You are in the kingdom. If there's a person here who has not entered into the kingdom, come and enter. Run that you should enter into the kingdom. If there's a person here who feels, I have not entered into the kingdom, come to the front. Move to the front of the church. Come to the front to enter into this kingdom. Clap for these people who are coming.